number five at Belmont Park. It is over the 1,600 metres. Now, Mark, we pride ourselves on being very well dressed. Well, Aaron Mitchell took us to the cleaners when he rode Krishan. These are some of the best silks I've ever seen. Yeah, the black and white silks. Looking forward to seeing them, and I think they might salute. But before we get to that, we'll have a look at the replay horse. Come on board, leading all of the way last start. Home turn now from Daisy Express, and well back to the outside, Prentice. He got squeezed up there in between Sebring Spy and Euroman at Rumman, and uh, trying to come through to his street banner starting to run on, but racing clear, come on board. It's got a big lead. Come on board by four lengths. Down the outside is Nelson's flight, then O'Reilly's Crumpet and Street Bandit and Daisy Express come on board is nicely clear, doing it well over Nelson's flight and O'Reilly's Crumpet and come on board. All come on board, it's just gone to the next level hasn't it, this horse just shows so much heart, Peter Hall mentioned post race that he thinks this horse can actually get out to 2000 metres and he's pretty happy just leading on it because he doesn't have a turn of foot but he knows that he's going to get 100% the whole way, now he started slowing up a bit late but still won by almost two lengths but my question mark is here, I don't think it's going to be ideal to be out in front and there's some very strong finishes in this race like Krishan, like McCavity, Goma Whipple as well, all horses that will be running on strongly. This is a really big test for come on board. It is but I really liked uh, the effort last start as you mentioned out in front Adam and great to see Gavin Foster having some nice success. Come on board of course pretentious chant uh, won the other week for him in a Saturday race which was really nice to see so his gallop is coming through nicely. We've also got in the race Adam Krishan is the galloper we spoke about leading into the race. Uh, some excellent silks. Uh, Aaron Mitchell keeps the right here, the Simon Miller train galloper. What really drew me to this galloper, well, ticked the final box, was its soft track record. Barrier four, five as well. I think you can just box seat in behind them. I think it'll be mighty hard to beat uh, from that draw. And the breeding there as well, by commands out of his appeal mare. So the command stock usually handle the wet. Aaron Mitchell's a tall enough jockey as it is, but he just grew a little bit of height here. He's very confident walking around this. He's got the nice bow tie as well, and I think they'll be saluting on the weekend. I think this is a serious horse. It was a very good performance over the 1,400 metres, beating Harry Thomas, which I know we've got a good opinion of as well. Up to the 16, even better. This horse is going to get 2,000 metres from what we've seen so far. It'll just keep attacking the line. It finished fourth in Canterbury over 1,900 as well. I think this goes close to being one of the best of the day. Absolutely, and we've also got quickly, we'll touch on Nelson's flight was also in in that replay we saw heavily backed on that day into two dollars forty just got the run up along the inside probably at the wrong time a little bit too late but i can see improvement to come here they haven't mind a punt on this horse have mm. they the last three starts three dollars three dollars and two dollars forty the money does keep coming for it but it's a really good race goma whipple has been in great form as we mentioned and a couple of others in this but krishan i think will be getting the job done number three from five goma whipple four mccavity and number eight nelson's flight three krishan on top for me also adam from number eight nelson's flight two come on board and four mccavity Race number six at Belmont Park. It's a 1,600 metre event, a 62 plus, and for mine, Mark, this is the most even race of the day. Yeah, very competitive field, Adam. Our replay horse is Jaspara, running second last start behind Jatumi. Then Saxapak going up on the outside. Behind them, Travelin' Jaspara squeezing up on the inside there. There's not a lot of room, but he's through. And not again, Ken keeps coming. Jatumi's winding up down the outside. Jaspara getting up on the inside of Headlander Boy. Travelin' closing. Not again, Ken. Here comes comes Jatumi though, winding up Jaspara Jatumi, Jatumi flying at Jaspara, Jaspara Jatumi. Brilliant performance there by Jaspara, I think they won before the post, after the post, but Lucy was able to get the bob perfectly on Jatumi now Jatumi since then has been three wide the trip and finished fourth in a staying race so those form lines have really held up around that galloper. Question mark for mine, obviously Jaspara got the run of the race last start from Barrier 1, they're drawn very wide here, that's a negative, but conditions again, I think they can get back and be led into this race nicely and it's got the fitness now and the class to be playing a part in this. In that replay we saw Adam Headlander Boy led them up. It was actually not a bad effort to be beaten under three lengths. Indy Pacific for mine, she doesn't get the mile. I think I've said this before. Also out of the race was Early Sun. Had absolutely no luck. If you do get a chance, rewind and go back and see Early Sun because just didn't get out. There will be plenty left in the tank. Barrier 12, I think Autier, especially with the softer track. I really like Early Sun in this race but it's a uh, Quite an open field. We've even got likes of Phantom Choice with, I think, a couple of runs under the belt. Enjoys the soft track. Back at Belmont, can run a nice race. And of course, Ruffett, a last star winner, which hasn't put a foot wrong this prep. You could go through almost every runner in this race and give a case. You've mentioned a couple there. I mean, Travelin showed last time I can get the 16. Middle Earth put in a really good run last time. I think the four lines around that are going to go well. Fire detonators attacking the line. Mm -hmm. Rare coin.
Stone was one that was wide behind Ruffhead and only lost by half length. Gets a weight swing now as well. It is such an even race. If you're doing the quaddy, you're going to have to go wide here. And I think we'll probably have some very different numbers here. I've got 12 rare coin on top from seven Ruffhead, two Jaspara and number 10 Early Sun. Yeah, I've got number 10 on top here, Early Sun. From the 11, five Detonator, one Travelin and seven Ruffhead. Race number seven, it is the big one of the day. It's the Group 3 Strickland Stakes. Mark, very excited to see. Scales of Justice, first time ever over 2,000 metres. Yeah, it shouldn't be an issue for mine, Adam. The replay we'll have a look at is the Hyperion and Scales of Justice winning quite comfortably. Just to work on him now, and he led to Mickey Tutos. Battle Hero down on the rail. Then disposition a length and a half away, being followed by Lightning in my veins. Zarance runs on, but Scales of Justice now drops a gear. He drops two gears, he pulls away. He's three in front now with 100 left to go from on the outside Zarantz running on but it's all Scales of Justice and the Group 1 Railway winner back in the high period Brilliant performance there by Scales of Justice did exactly what we thought it would just led through the early stages, ears were pricked got a lovely cruising speed kicked away and managed to win by three lengths. Now I'm really intrigued to see how this goes. I've got confidence that this horse will run out the 2000 metres. Dan Stake has said that, Lindsay Smith has said that and I think we've seen that. My question Mark is what are the other jockeys and trainers going to do here because if they let Scales of Justice dictate, well, they're going to run second, third, fourth, fifth, and sixth. Someone needs to do something to try and beat Scales of Justice because if it's run the same way the high period is done, we've got the same results occurring here. Whether someone's got the guts to do it, we'll wait and see. But if it goes that way, Scales will be winning. I'm not saying that the connections or jockeys of other horses don't have the guts to do it, but I just don't. I think they'll just be uh, imploding on themselves. It'll be a bad error to Scales do that. Scales will be winning then yeah, comfortably. Yeah, absolutely. I think it'll be a suicide mission to try to do that. And we heard Lindsay Smith say that after winning the Hyperion Stakes. Look, Scales are just as scary good. We've said it. Uh, he's got so much improvement to come. I was actually worried in the Hyperion because he pulls so hard. Well, he looks to be pulling so hard. I'd love to see him just roll along. If he rolls along over the 2,000 metres, I think he wins by further. Zarantz was flashing home in that replay we saw and uh, some of the connections there were quite bullish about stepping out over 2,000 metres against this Galloper. So, look, Zarantz can certainly run second. I've got him running second quite clearly, but of the rest, it's a bit of a raffle. We've got the likes of it to him. I think disposition will actually be okay out to 2,000 metres. His class, class usually rises to the top in these wait for age events. Lightning My Veins was good last start. Of the rest, I think they lack the class. Well, I think Zarantz is a real threat, as you mentioned. Seven attempts on a soft track if the rain does come and has placed in the top three on all seven runs. It to him's a big improver for mine. I go the other way. I'm a bit worried about disposition at the 2,000. I think may struggle here, but Scales of Justice has to go on top the number one. I'll be playing Zarantz the place and uh, maybe even trying to get a little bit of value, see if it can roll the favourite. Number two, it's a him. I think we get a really nice place bet again about this Galloper and six Puna Moon. Yeah, for me, Adam, I've got number one on top as well, Scales of Justice. From the five Zarantz, two it's a him, and three disposition. Final race of the day at Belmont Park. It's over the 1,200 metres. It looks to be dominated by the Cerise and White, but Mark, we're looking elsewhere for our replay. Yeah, our replay horse, Adam, is Pirate's Fortune. Last start. Uh Running half a length behind Detango. Pirates Fortune coming to the outside. Capanda Friaris going up near the cutaway. Hoped and further back. Detango trying to make ground with the Dangster at the 200. And Friaris has got up on the inside to go to the lead. Friaris quickly kicked two lengths in front. Battling away then. Pirates Fortune coming now. Detango. Friaris is stopping. Detango pounced upon it. And Detango nailed them. Detango. Well, those form lines have really held up. Detango jumping $1.80 on Wednesday and winning impressive as well. I like Pirates Fortune's form lines. Good runs around Star and Glitter as well, which are genuine Saturday form lines. My question mark though from Barrier 10 on a day where I don't think you want to be on the speed, that that's exactly where this horse is probably going to lob. My other question is, I think the Cerise and White runners in this are pretty good. Yeah, they're superior, aren't they? Just also out of that replay, we saw Aces, which was flashing home. That gallop is in good form, but I don't think it can get near the two Cerise and White runners. Bold success. That recent trial was outstanding, Adam. And Show Honey back down to 1,200 metres. After being tested out to 1,600 Look, I don't think the run was that bad. William Pike felt disappointed, but also had excuses, got squeezed as uh, as you would have seen in that run. And look, I can forgive that, but back to 1,200. Looks to be genuinely run as well. I think uh, she could be storming over the top with only 52.5 kilos on her back. There's a lot to like, isn't there? If you like show honey, as you mentioned, I think a positive to the 12, 52.5, and uh, we know this horse has got a good turn of foot. I like bold success, and because that's, I don't think there's been a Cerise and White runner so green go to the races. And we saw this gelding last start 
do so much wrong but still race so well. Had the four starts of victory and three placings. The recent trial, as you said, was very impressive. I'll be putting it on top, going with William Pike from number 13, Show Honey, seven aces wish and eight cool image. I've got the hyphen in the last, number 13, Show Honey for Clint Johnston Porter. Six bold success, seven aces wish and eight cool image. Time now to take a look at the best bets of the card and I'm going to go with race three, number five, Galaxy Star and race five, number three, Krishan. I'm going race four, number one, Profit Street and race five, number three, Krishan as well, Adam. As we always do say, you can follow us on social media. You can see them on screen at the moment, perthracing.com.au, of course, our website and our YouTube channel. On behalf of both of us, hopefully found you plenty of winners. Quick and go.